Okay, guys. Now the fun starts. We're gonna create the the hook, the famous roadhog hook. And I haven't created this before, so I'm gonna be creating it with you guys from scratch. So let's get to it. Alright then. So I'm not sure how they do the roadhog hook exactly, if it's a trace, if it's a collision, but we're gonna do it this way. I'm gonna create a sphere collision. I'm gonna create a sphere collision. I'm gonna call this hook collision. And I'm gonna set it right here. Now let's adjust the sphere radius. Maybe 20? No. 15. I think 15 is right for now. So let's adjust that. We got the left thumb here. Let's throw it around there. Or let's put it a little bit front, because you can see the hook when you're walking. So let's hit it in game, let's turn that off so we can see the collision. So we add a mesh for the hook. Let's see if it's visible in the camera. Okay, so we have the hook there. Let's put it, pull it a little bit further back. We don't want it completely visible. Okay. Maybe a little bit further. And down. Let's check again. So I think we'll get a little bit there. Save that quickly. Okay. So the way we're gonna do this, let me think. So basically, we want to on input, which is gonna be left shift. Let's create the left shift input. Oh my God! Why are you freezing? So input, we're gonna create a new, whoa, I created two. I'm gonna create a new one. And we're gonna call it launch hook. We're gonna set it to left shift. Now we're gonna go back to Roadhog and we're gonna find a space, maybe down here. Launch hook, okay. So we want, let me type it here. On input, F enter two. On collision. So that's basically the the flow of the hook. So we press the button, and when we press it, the hook is gonna interpolate a couple of units in front of us. I'm not sure how much units the the hook travels. I don't think that's visible. So let's just put a random number. So the hook interpolates forwards a couple of units, and then backwards. So if it hits something while interpolating it's gonna grab that and return back. If it doesn't hit anything, it reaches the final like destination and then it returns back. So it's basically two interpolations. We can either interpolate them or use uh, a timeline. I'm gonna be using a in basic interpolation. So let's get started. Let's create a float, which is gonna be the forward vector length. I'm going to call it hook max distance. And we're going to save that. Okay. Now we're going to, we have to create a couple of functions. Where's the tick? 
Tech, where are you, Tech? I think we use Tech. No, not sure. Whatever. Event Tech. Okay, so we have tech because you need tech for interpolation because it, the values constantly move per tech so they look smooth and we are going to create the function for the hook to move so start hook end hook start hook we want to f interp f interp to so we're gonna interpolate shut up so we're gonna interpolate the current value of the hook collision get vector no get location get world location we're gonna break that we are going to get the X value we, because we want the hook to move forward and then backwards let's see how much units we should make it move Four hundred units. Let's start with uh, four hundred. So we take the x vector. We want to move it hook max distance four hundred. We move it four hundred units forward. Get delta time. We connect the delta time there and interpolation speed we can start with 5 I guess or 15 let's make it a variable just so we can adjust hook speed okay so now we take the hook collision set world location We make a vector out of the interpolation and we connect it there and these two values we basically just plug it from the actual current location because we only want to move the hook forward using the x vector and I think that should work let's quickly test it out So we need to create a state. Yes, there's two ways we can do this. We can create a boolean and we can just basically set it to true or, or false when the player launches the hook and when the hook returns back. Or we, we can create a enumeration and basically just set two different states. But for simplicity, we're just gonna create a bool. So we're gonna create a variable boolean and we're gonna call it uh, is hook launching so when we press the input key is hook launching set to true which then we're gonna set a true and false here is hook launching is that true we then start the hook which then moves the hook to the interpolated value that we wish for it to move and let's see if it currently works it's not gonna work perfectly we just want to see if it moves so left shift and yep yeah it kept <laughs> moving forward so it, it does work but it it moves like constantly 
So let's lower the max distance to like 50. Let's try again. So we see the hook is kind of moving very weirdly. Okay, so I think we have to change lo the location where the hook moves and use the the camera. The way we, we shot the projectiles, let me see, get projectile transform. We should use this same code. So let's get back to this. Like I said, I'm doing this with you guys from scratch. I haven't done this before, so there's a lot of trial and error. And that's what I want to teach here. I don't want to like just show you guys how it's done, the end result, and you just copy and paste it. I want you guys to go over the process with me so you see how it how we programmers develop systems from scratch. Okay, so sphere, we want the hook collision. Because we want to launch the hook forward where the camera is aiming. Let me let me quickly take a break. Let me see how I can get it how I can get it to work with the camera and then we're going to resume. Okay, so there's a couple of checks that we have to make sure we do so the hook doesn't constantly move forward. We want to check the distance traveled by the hook and if it hits something while it's traveling to that location. So on the start hook, since this is running every single tick, we're going to do the check here just to keep the code very contained and encapsulated. So on start hook, after we launch the hook, we want to check. First, let's also save the hook starting location the same way we did with the, the other the projectile. So vector starting hook location. And we're gonna set that on event big and play. Where did we put it? Event big and play, okay. So starting hook location. We're gonna set that in event big and play and we're just gonna set get world location. So we save the initial world location. Actually, mm, now nah, we should move it. Move it on relative location. Get relative. Yeah, because then if we start moving forward or backwards, the world location is gonna like get a little bit messed up. So let's. Let's quickly change this to get relative location. Let's quickly see if that works with the code that I did. I'm gonna go over this in a little bit. Ah! So we have to make sure the hook travels a certain distance and if it hits something between that distance it returns back to the player and the way we're gonna do this is when we launch the hook we want to set the starting hook location so if create that variable if you haven't connect that there and we are going to get the hook collision world location and we're gonna connect it there. So whenever we launch the hook, we record and we save the initial location from where it starts so that it can return back to the player. 
So let's see if that works. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please smash that subscribe button and follow me on my social media, especially Instagram. See you on the next one.